Right, let's turn to the story now. Advocate Busisiwe Mkobane has uh, a new political hope. South Africa's first impeached Chapter 9 head today announced that she's joining the Economic Freedom Fighters. And Mkobane joins us now uh, for more on this latest move. Advocate, good to have you. Thank you very much uh, for your time tonight here on In Focus. Good uh, evening. Good evening to the listeners of Newsroom Africa. I... Have a look at the, the, the EFF statement. Obviously, you gave them your CV, uh, and, and, and they cite a number of uh, places where you've been, your experience in education, in senior management, um, the national and provincial uh, uh, elections experience in terms of uh, heading there as far as governance is concerned, um, and, and your work in civil society for decades, having served as a senior researcher for the South African Human Rights Commission, a senior investigator in the Office of the Public Protector, Counselor for Immigration, Civic Service in South Africa's Embassy, uh, Department of Home Affairs, and so on and so forth. None of these uh, cite your political experience or your political home, uh, so to speak. And many have uh, for years assumed that uh, you, you, you were a member of the ANC. Is that assumption correct? <laughs> I had that question as well today, and I was surprised that people were thinking I'm a member of the ANC. I said it during my interview um, in uh, 2016 that I'm not a member of any political party. You know, I, I was even thinking now that, you know what, I'll be a career politician because this is my first political home. And uh, I'll be learning a lot, and I'm looking forward uh, to learning from um, the other um, freedom fighters. Yeah. Why, after all these years, do you decide to, 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 to have a political hope and actually play an active role in politics? You know, um, I was working within a political space, and everything we do... Um, it's political. Um, normally, I would say even to uh, the young people that, you know, when you speak about education, discrimination, unemployment, inequality, that's actually politics because um, at the end of the day, I said, um, I am now going to be protecting the public and you don't need a title to continue doing that. Each and every politician, um, each and every person should be uh, protecting those who are vulnerable. Therefore, for me, I then said, um, this is what I will still uh, continue doing. Yeah. Th there are a number of organizations that did not support your impeachment, EFF being one of them, ATM being being. Being, being another and other uh, smaller parties, including the UDM, uh, that did not support your impeachment. There are new parties that are being formed uh, that uh, are planning to contest the 2024 elections. Why the EFF and not any of the others? You know, I uh, said um, I was approached by several um, uh, other organizations uh, leaders, and uh, when I was approached by the EFF and uh, going through the uh, uh, seven cardinal pillars, I could relate directly with what um, they intend to do, and uh, which, um, as the former public protector, I've seen the suffering of the people. I mean, the seven cardinal pillars being expropriation of land without compensation, nationalization of the mines and banks, Free quality, uh, equality, education, health care, and houses, you know, building the state capacity and um, the massive uh, protected industrial development. So I then said, actually, the issue of open, accountable, and corrupt free government and society, which I've got um, a lot of experience as far as that is concerned. So I then decided that I would join them and I could um, relate and that is what I would um, uh, be comfortable in doing going forward. Yeah. Is this a career move in the sense that there's a prospect for you to become an MP, head to parliament? Have you had those kind of conversations with the economic freedom fighters? I think that 
Okay, um, you had me reading the declaration and what I'm committing myself in. So that is up to the uh, leadership of the EFF to deploy me wherever they see fit. But as far as I'm concerned, I told them with my expertise, I would contribute in changing uh, the lives of the South Africans and the poor and the marginalized. And as well, I mean, I've issued several reports, and those reports um, cut across all service delivery-related issues of uh, government and the failures, service failures of government. Therefore, um, I would want to assist them. And also, if it comes to contributing to policy changes, uh, which will change the lives of South Africans, definitely I'm willing to assist in any sphere which they will be deploying me to. So you, you, you would see yourself serving better, for example, in, 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 in a local government space where most of the service delivery would actually need to happen? I would serve in any space. Um, I would also serve with the best in policy making, policy changing. Uh, but I'm just somebody who can do anything. I would be thrown into a local municipality, provincial, national, parliament, and everywhere. Um, you know, I am somebody who is definitely uh, change the status quo. I'll definitely contribute um, to the upliftment and the changing of the, um, uh, you know, the status and the uh, quality of. Uh, the living conditions of, of the people. Yeah. I don't know if you were confronted with this question a little bit earlier on, but your relationship with the EFF was quite toasty at, at the beginning. In fact, the, the leader once saying, once a spy, always a spy. And we made a mistake with this one. We thought we were giving her a chance, but this comrade will completely destroy that office. Have, have you cleared that air? Have you sat down and, and cleared this, this allegation of being a spy with the, the leader of the EFF? Um, you know that you can um, uh, ask the CIC, but then all I can say is that uh, I was trying to, because I took that matter to court, and especially because what the DA did was to change the credibility and the integrity of the institution, that matter was still before court, and uh, unfortunately the team public protector withdrew that matter. So... At the end of the day, uh, that's what the leader said, and I think uh, that's what you can find out from him, whether indeed he still stands by that. But because I, they approached me and they wanted me to be part of them, I think they now know, um, and they supported me during the Section 194 committee, and they could see that indeed, I'm the public protector I committed myself uh, to be. And indeed, um, I proved myself. I proved that I could deliver um, the services. Therefore, um, they saw it fit to approach me so that I can work with them. Yeah. No, I, I certainly will put that question to, to him when I do get a chance. But I, I wonder what would have influenced your decision. I mean, surely you, you would have known that view that they held about you. What, what would have changed your mind about uh, them uh, uh, and holding that particular view of you? You know, um, what changed uh, my, or what made me to go to them and to accept um, their uh, offer was just to make sure that I work with them to change the lives of the South Africans. You know, as uh, the declaration again, coming back to it, it says, are you willing to serve selflessly? It's not about me. It's about them uh, approaching me and realizing and seeing it fit that I could um, assist in them achieving their mandate. And I think one thing for sure as well, I don't want to... Um, use that and uh, at the end of the day just uh, hang into uh, that comment which was made long time ago. The EFF has changed and the leadership of the EFF has changed. They've supported me through and through. 
through the persecution by the ANC and the DA. So definitely, for me, I saw it fit that I could work with them. And that mm. was the only instance where that was mentioned. Yes. And we continued to work um, together. So, I mean, I, I understand that to say part of what could have influenced your decision was the, the support that they showed you during this Section 194 process. Others are saying, well, you were also represented uh, by a, a, a very public EFF member, uh, Advocate Dalimpo. Um, definitely. I mean, you know, Advocate Dalimpo, who is uh, a very seasoned um, uh, advocate, and we were purely dealing with um, his professional um, mandate of uh, protecting, in fact, of defending me uh, through that Section 194 committee. It has nothing to do with the political organization it belongs to. I was represented by other advocates who are belonging to other political parties. And, and um, when you are an advocate or an attorney, uh, normally you would then focus on what you are expected to do. Definitely that has nothing to do with the fact that Advocate Dalimbofu is a member of the, of the, of the, of the EFF. And <laughs> for your information, he is not the one who approached me, um, especially that uh, I must join um, the EFF or who, 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 who approached you. I was approached by the um, deputy president of the of the of the of the EFF, and as well not only him but uh, even other provincial fighters and former <laughs> leaders of the EFF who are serving or who are serving in in the in the leadership structure. So I would say um, advocating for who has nothing to do with this. But then at the end of the day. One will be learning a lot from him. Now um, roles have changed. I'll be learning a, a lot um, about um, the political space. Yeah. I, 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 I have no information. Maybe you can put me straight here. But is there a, a branch of the EFF where, where you stay in Petal? Or will you be starting that branch? No, um, I joined the EFF uh, we branch in um, Kwakafontein. I stayed in Kwakafontein. I, I grew up in Kwakafontein. I stayed there for more than 40 to uh, 45 years. So today I joined the branch in, uh, EFF in um, Bumalanga, the Kwakafontein, um, Watch 28. Uh, so the chairperson of the of the of the of the branch was also there, and all the leadership of the of the of the of the movement. And so, uh, what I will be doing is to help them, to empower them, and uh, so that we can change the um, lives of the South Africans. Yeah, looking at this career change, as you put it, coming to be a a, a career politician, does this? spell the end of your legal battles or is this as a, an, another strategy in your move around some of the legal fights I suppose that are still pending around your, your tenure as the public protector? No, I will continue to fight. Um, remember the way I was um, um, you know, treated. Uh, the process was unfair. I never completed my testimony. I never um, was given an opportunity to be represented. Uh, they violated the constitutional court judgment, and um, you know I was um, judged by people who were um, conflicted. The husband to the complainant, um, they refused to even call that complainant. Definitely, that will be pursued, and then the matter now is before the Supreme Court of Appeal especially on the issue of uh, um, recusal or janji and then re refusing to recuse themselves. So that is still ongoing. And uh, to put it out there as well, um, the legal team is with me through and through. They are willing to do this still um, pro bono, and uh, we will still continue to fight it as a matter of principle. And that is done to protect um, my uh, or 
um, my successors and other heads of Chapter 9 institutions, though they never, um, you know, uh, 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 bothered to participate and as well to make sure that whatever uh, precedent which has been set by my removal, unfortunately, it will uh, come back to bite them. So this process is to make sure that we don't see this injustice being perpetuated um, to another Chapter 9 institution. Yeah. So, I mean, there's your own litigation that is currently going. Of course, you're, you're putting that through a judiciary system. But as a politician now, uh, wherever you will be deployed, maybe if you are deployed in parliament, do you have a bone to pick with the judiciary and the state of the judiciary in, in, in South Africa? And, and, and are these some of the battles that you, you hope to fight as a politician? I'm not going to be fighting. Um, I'm not having any, um, you know, grudges. What I will be doing, I will be making sure that the judiciary, they perform their responsibilities according to what the Constitution expects them to be. Remember, if you are a politician, you are uh, a mouthpiece of the public, you are the voice of the public. And as politicians, uh, wherever you are, you need to hold the public servants to account. So they will also have to account. Um, they will have to be held to account in the performance of their responsibilities. And uh, that's purely that it's not, um, you know, uh, having a gripe uh, about how they uh, treated me. Because cases are still ongoing, and uh, another one is before the um, African Commission, and especially where they utilized uh, Judge Basin Kabinde to lead the panel. So that process will still be ongoing, and uh, one will continue to be protecting the public. I mean, it's interesting that the ASB and the DA managed to have two-thirds majority, uh, including our ACDP, uh, Good Party, FF Plus, and um, the IFP um, to remove me. And I think it will be interesting um, to have the same energy to change the lives of the South Africans um, going forward. Yeah. I, I'm asking that purely out of the, the clips that you shared, of the conversation that happened between your husband and the late Tina Yomat uh, that says the courts are with Ramaphosa and whether or not it is something that you would want to focus into and address if you believe so strongly about it. Yes, um, that will be dealt with. It's part of accountability. Um, the president is also one executive who should be accounting to parliament um, you know, and uh, I've said several times that, unfortunately, in South Africa, we find that the president is the um, president of the party, and you find that a lot of the members of parliament are, um, you know, the uh, subordinate to, to him, and sometimes it's difficult for them to hold him to account. But I think that's the responsibility of uh, um, politicians um, to hold the executive to account and the issue of transparency. And, I mean, coming to the issue of the late Tina Jumat Peterson, um, may her soul rest in peace. I mean, she was so transparent and she exposed the relation and things which are happening within the uh, 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 that committee and especially the ASB. So, um, you know, the responsibility of opposition parties and politicians are not there to serve their selfish interests. They should be there to make sure that they um, hold the executives and any other them to account, lead by example as leaders of society. Quick one, I have 30 seconds, literally. Tomorrow, 19th of October, it's believed, anecdotally, is not confirmed, but that Parliament will actually be voting to confirm South Africa's uh, uh, public protector, and it's likely going to be Advocate Kolega Kalega. Do you have any views on that? Um, you know, again, it's a question of uh, the portfolio committee or the ad hoc committee which appointed here. I shortlisted here. They thought it's best 
to recommend her to um, be appointed. I think um, I wouldn't comment much. Um, the only thing is she must just concentrate in protecting the public and holding the executive to account, not to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, Seeking the narrative that he, she is the president protector or the ANC protector. So she needs to, um, when she's appointed, um, you know, focus on protecting the public. Advocate Mrs. Kobane, I appreciate your time. I wish you all your best in your new career as a politician. Thanks for coming on.